So that would be one way to create a standing wave. Another way to create a standing wave, perhaps the easiest one, is you produce an oscillation on one part of a medium, and uh, you, uh, if the medium is finite, which much, uh, most mediums would be, then uh, when the wave reaches the end of that medium, there will be a reflection coming off that end. So let me show you that. So here uh, I have uh, something, I've clamped this end of the medium so that this rod is not allowed to, to move. I'll also show you when I get rid of that. This is going to be the next demo, I'm just going to disconnect it for now. So if you produce a wave, a pulse, let's say a pulse. It reaches the end of the medium, and because of that uh, rod being, being um, fixed, the wave actually bounces, the pulse actually bounces. Now notice the way in which it bounces. I'm going to make it even bigger. That's positive displacement. It comes back with negative displacement, right? It gets him flipped. Okay, if you missed that, I'm going to do it again. Comes back below the equilibrium line. So that's when the medium, as we're going to call it, is closed or fixed here. There is no oscillation that is allowed at that end of the medium. But things are different when you allow the medium to oscillate freely. There's still going to be an oscill a reflection, but it gets reflected on the top. It doesn't flip. Do that again, positive displacement, pulse, gets to the end, comes back, positive displacement. Okay, so that's a, a major difference in the boundary condition as, as maybe you cover in, in calculus. We talked about boundary condition. The function, which describes the displacement of these rods, that function is forced to have a zero, in one case, to be zero displacement at one point, that's a boundary condition, or in another case, it's, it's, uh, it's allowed to oscillate as much as it wants. So that's a different boundary condition. So if I produce a, a continuous pulse here, then that wave moves that way, moves to the end, and then when it reaches that end, it's going to be, it's going to be reflected. So at all times, I'm going to have a wave that is moving that way and a wave, a reflected wave moving in the opposite direction. So that's all you need to have a standing wave. Right? This is uh, what we just discussed, one wave moving one way, the other one in the opposite direction with the same amplitude, same uh, frequency. Still see it? Yeah. So then, what happens when, uh, like I said, you start shaking one side of a of a medium? The, there is a wave moving one way, there is the wave moving in the opposite direction. If things are right, that is, if the frequency at which you're shaking this medium is right, then you can have a standing wave in this medium. Notice that not any frequency would manage to create a standing wave, because frequency is related with the wavelength, right? And to have a standing wave, in this case, with a node here, and this displacement is very, very little, so you can think of it as being another node. To have this particular kind of standing wave pattern, you must have 
the length of the medium needs to match half, three half wavelengths in this particular case. Right? I could have only, uh, it was hard to get it because the frequency is too low, but I could have gotten only this kind of oscillation through the whole thing, but only one bond going up and down. Okay? There is particular frequencies, meaning there is particular wavelengths of the waves that do fit exactly in that medium, that are consistent with the boundary conditions that you impose in your system. Think about the case of a guitar string. The guitar string is uh, pinned on both ends. Those points of the string are not allowed to oscillate. When you plug the guitar string, you would have some oscillation. You produce waves moving in one way and moving in the opposite direction. Those waves interfere with each other, and they will produce a standing wave uh, pattern. The standing wave that they're going to produce has to be consistent with the boundary condition that the string does not move on this side, the string does not move on this other side. Okay? So that's just to uh, point out that not any frequency is going to produce a standing wave in the case of a system that has uh, both ends open or one closed and one open and so on. We'll, we'll discuss those different cases here. What do you think would happen if I made this system a little bigger? I've, the frequency remains the same. This thing goes up and down at the same rate. But now I make this, I replace this with a longer wave table. Would I be able to set up a standing wave there? The answer is it's going to depend on the length of the table. If it's just a little bit longer, it will become a mess. You will not see any nice pattern. You will see just ripples here and there, randomly going up and down. Okay? Because since the frequency is fixed, the wavelength of the traveling waves going this way and the traveling wave bouncing, that wavelength is the same. I'm not changing that. That means that if there is any standing wave pattern that can be produced there, that standing wave pattern is going to have a distance of lambda divided by 2 between nodes. That distance is going to be fixed. Right? The distance between a node and the next node, that is going to be fixed if I don't change the frequency of this. Right? So to have a standing wave pattern with the same frequency, I'll have to make sure that the length of this table is maybe this plus half a wavelength more so that I can fit one of these humps perfectly here. Okay? If I do half of that, that's not going to work. Right? So the length of the medium for a standing wave has to match. There is a matching condition between the length of the medium and half a wavelength of the standing wave. Right? So this pattern does not change because I change uh, the distance between the two, for example, the two speakers. That pattern still continues to be exactly the same, right? But for the case of a standing wave in a medium like that one, where it's uh, what you're seeing there, the length of that table would have to either fit this, or it would have to fit two half wavelengths, or it would have to fit three half wavelengths, or four. Any integer number of half a wavelength would have to match the length of the device. If that's not the case, you cannot set up a standing wave. So one way I could do to destroy the standing wave pattern is I cannot change the length of the table, but I can change the frequency. So if I change it just a tiny bit, you'll see that that pattern actually goes away. Then it no longer looks like a very organized thing going up and down like that. Okay. So that matching uh, has, a condition has to occur. So what is uh, exactly that? Let's look at that. 